Hello everyone and welcome to the short video tutorial series of Planet Pro created by Wenji Chow and myself. I'm Mike Shaw. There are six photography tools in Planet Pro. In the last video we discussed the first tool, coordinates and elevation. In this video let's talk about the second tool, distance and view. If you tap the viewfinder button you can see the choices for the six tools. The first one, coordinates and elevation, has an icon of a single point. The second tool, distance and view, has two points. So what are these two points? Let's tap it to try to find out. The moment you choose the distance and view tool, the camera pin gets automatically set at the map center. This gives you a big hint that the camera location is one of the two points. Then if you drag the map like this, you'll see a line being drawn between the camera pin and the map center. The values over here are changing as well, indicating the two points are changing. So if the camera pin is the first point, the map center must be the second point. But let's find out what will happen if we put down the scene pin. Tap the plus button and tap here to set the scene location. Now if you drag the map, the values don't change anymore. This means that both points are now set. So based on this observation, we know for sure that the camera location and the scene location are the two points for the distance and view tool if both are set. Knowing where these two points are set will now make it easy to understand the values over here. The first value is the azimuth, which is the direction. The azimuth line uses the first point, or the camera location is the center, or one end. Then the scene location is the other end of the azimuth line. So if the scene pin is over here to the north, the azimuth will be 0 degrees. If it's to the east, it'll be 90 degrees. South, 180 degrees, and west, 270 degrees. In this example, the scene location direction is between the east and the south of the map center. That's why it says 127 degrees, which is somewhere between 90 and 180 degrees. The second value is the distance. Now that's easy to understand. It's simply the distance between the two points of the camera location and the scene location. The values here have a blue color. Now this blue color anywhere in planet means you can tap to edit the value or the setting. So let's try to tap the azimuth, and yes, looks like we can edit it. Let's enter 90 degrees, and we'll tap set. Now the scene pin is set to a 90 degree azimuth, which is exactly east of the camera location. Tap the distance, let's enter 9 miles and tap set. Now the scene pin is 9 miles away from the camera pin. Perfect. In other words, we just set the scene pin 9 miles to the east of the camera pin. The distance also gives us a way to measure any two points on the map. Suppose you want to add a marker for a building, which means you need to know the height and the width of the building. Now you can often Google the name of the building, and if it's famous, you can most likely find out its height. But the same isn't true for the width of the building. You usually won't be able to Google that. Here's where we can use the distance tool to find out the width of the building. First, drag the camera pin and put it at one corner of the building. Then drag the scene pin to put it at the other corner. And look here, it says 239 feet. So that's the width of the building, which we got from using the distance tool. I use this all the time to measure distances on the maps. So far we've talked about the azimuth and the distance. The last value is the elevation gain. So I'll use a real life example to show you how to use the elevation gain feature. First, let's take a look at all the buildings in Los Angeles. Let's sort them by height. We'll tap to select the tallest building, the Wilshire Grand Center. And here you go. We'll set it as the scene location. Now, I want to set the camera location in a mountainous area. In order to best see mountains on the map, let's switch to the hybrid map format. Press and hold to select a location in the mountain, and we'll set it as the camera location. If you're not happy with this camera location, you can press and hold the camera pin and drag it to another location like this. Let's find out what the elevation gain is between these two points. We'll tap it, and here comes the result you'll immediately notice that while the line between the two locations was a gray color before, now it's turned mostly green, but part of it is red or yellow. So what do these colors mean? If you tap the elevation gain value again, you'll find out. On the top, the graph shows an elevation profile between the camera location and the scene location. How great is that? So here's the scene, and here's the camera. You can tap to zoom in a little bit, and you can see that the line of sight is blocked by the terrain right here. These blocked sections are marked by a red color. In other words, if your camera is at this location, you won't be able to see your subject, which in this case is the Wilshire Grand Center. So a green colored line means a clear view, while a red colored line means the view is blocked. 
and a yellow color or whatever color you see between the red section and the green section means the view is almost blocked. So now let's dive in and find out exactly where the terrain blocks the view. Here, each row indicates a location on the map between the two locations. Tap a row and you'll see a red dot on the graph to indicate where the location for that row is. Here, it looks like it's the third row that blocks the view. We'll tap it and the red dot is just at the location where the red ends. Now I can press and hold on the third row. The map is automatically centered at that location. Then, if I set this new location as the camera location, tap to get the elevation cane, the line is now completely in green. So what does that mean? It means we have a clear view to the Wilshire Grand Center at this camera location. Is this great or what? You just found a camera location in the mountains that has a clear view to the Los Angeles downtown. Now you probably notice that you have to manually tap each time you want to update the elevation gain, which isn't very convenient. The reason for this is that we have to retrieve the elevation data from the elevation data server, which takes time because it's a different server from the map one. This means we can't update the elevation automatically. Now there is a way to improve this situation. You can download the offline elevation data beforehand and that will speed things up considerably. Go to the menu, click the download button next to the offline elevation, wait until it finishes downloading. Now if I press and hold the camera pin and drag it, you'll see the line is automatically updated with different colors. The elevation gain value over here is also updated automatically. You'll probably notice that dragging becomes slower than before. That's because we're constantly getting the elevation data and calculating whether the terrain blocks the view, which takes time. But what's nice about this approach is that you can now immediately tell if you can see the scene from the camera location. For example, right here, I can see the view is blocked. You can tap here to see the graph to confirm it is indeed blocked here. I can drag the camera location to another spot where the line is completely green, which means a clear view. Let's take a look at the VR viewfinder to confirm. Let's switch to 300 millimeters, and here you go. A clear view to the Los Angeles downtown. This is a very useful feature when you try to scout a location on the map. Finally, let's take a look at how the elevation gain is calculated. Here are two examples. The only difference is that the first one has the scene location on the top of a hill, while the second one has the scene location on top of a building. And this is how we calculate the elevation gain from the camera height to the scene location. This is the elevation gain. In the second case, we'll include the building and make its height part of the total elevation gain. So back to planet, we'll tap here to see the graph. Here it actually shows a white bar, indicating the height above the terrain. The reason we have such a height is because we set the target height. Tap the scene pin and tap the height button. Here's the target height of 1099.93 feet. That's the height of the Wilshire Grand Center. If I zoom in, tap the marker, you can see the building height on the title bar, which is 1099.93 feet. The target height is automatically set to the building height when you set the scene pin on the building marker. Now, the reason the elevation gain is 525 feet is not because the elevation at the scene location is higher than the elevation at the camera location. We can see that the elevation at the camera location is 781 feet, whereas the elevation at the scene location is only 232 feet, so the scene is actually lower in elevation. However, we added a 1,099.93 foot tall building on top of the 232 foot scene height and then calculate the net elevation gain, which is 525 feet. So the 525 feet net elevation gain is from the camera elevation to the top of the Wilshire Grand Center. For the best accuracy, we also need to include the camera height when we calculate the elevation gain. You can find out how to set the camera height from the camera height video tutorial. To illustrate, Let's now add a marker, we'll set it to the camera location category, and we'll set the camera height to 500 feet, the area diameter to 20 feet, done. Now the elevation gain is only 25 feet, not 525 feet, and that's because we just set the camera height to 500 feet. We can also see it visually in the graph here. The camera location has a white bar of 500 feet, which is the camera height, and over here the scene has a white bar of 1099 feet, which is the target height. So alright, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and enjoy learning and using Planet.